Because I think a lot of people don't look at creativity as a science. Yeah. When you're writing, and you're writing for yourself, it's very different for when you're writing for somebody else. Right? That, that, that's the way we come from. But there's culture that's happening right now that people will never see. If you've never been in Kosovo, I'll you X, X, Coke, I got. You'll never see. If you've never been in Kosovo, wait till Villa Radvi. There's a certain culture that even when you Google this, you will never find. Thomas Cosmo, Waras, Digmo Flavor, DJ Zandi. I mean, I think everything is underrated. <laughs> I am too light skinned to go to jail. But I'm a very small three. Then you come to. You are the rest of the four stories. You know, but you tell me, like, yo. Oh, and then, that's only when you realize that, oh, the D in your Adidas section, the other one, like, ah, yeah. And I said, like, it's Ben Dirt. Not Ben Dirt. Not Ben Dirt. Not Ben Dirt. Oh, okay. Bob okay. <laughs> and Bender. Benders. <laughs> so, Bender. Fire it out. Those people do it. Yes, sir. Damn. Welcome to the Millennials Corner, where most of us are lost in a trance. Yes, sir. What do you do, Buffet? To welcome back to another exciting episode of TMT Podcast. Mamela, I always say about it: the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guest. And today, we have got the best in the game. Boy, I'm fit. If you open like another lockdown when everybody was social distancing, right? The only thing that this guy could not social distance from was proving to the world just how much you can do to uplift people's spirits. You know, with Barking, got that tiny and a little bit of quit while adding some quiet. So I will explain what we mean by that later in the conversation. So Katja Fulafit is the author of this yellow book that's making waves in the States. Barking, you must have book. It's titled, you must have book. Yes, book. yes, sir. So he's a conceptual copywriter. He'll tell us what that is. He's a um, keynote speaker, an MC. And like this Jita has a lot of talent. It's my favorite But before... Uh, we get into all of that. Uh, let me remind you, what TMC is the brainchild of some super cool millennials who love talking about technology, creativity, you know, with a sprinkle of everything in between, right? So please do us and yourself a solid. If that's what you're into, hit the subscribe button. Stop whatever that you're doing. Go let your Makelo and your friends know that you're watching uh, the podcast because it definitely does help keep the magic at TMC alive. My dog. Thank you so much for joining us. No, it's amazing to Thank be here. Tower. When I hit you up, I was like, wait, I hope this guy I'm poor. Regular guy. Regular guy. I'm also just chilling, you know. Like, okay. Okay. Now, I can pull up. Nah, for well, sure. I'm really honored. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it does mean calling like we need whatever series it's I'm on another. Yeah, people yes. who are always willing to support the movement. Yeah. And I think, yeah, it, it, it's really amazing. Jeff. No, it's definitely good to be here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But before we start, yeah. right, my TMC, we have this cool thing every year, so just to come the nerves. But the ice break. Okay. Yeah. So, are the ice breaker. And then, whatever we can It's a little bit challenging. Oh, but I think, hard, eh? Yeah. <laughs> but I think the point of it is to pick your brain just to get um, how you can your sentiment around specific, like particular things that, you know, people are currently talking okay. about. Right. So, yeah. Uh, I'm afraid to, before we get started, this game uh, was helped put together by Roy Manitou. And Roy Manitou is a range of Up of the Sun's wine. Oh, it's a flick. So if that's something that you're into, there's a QR code on screen, please make sure that you scan it and then you check their websites. Maybe you might find something here yeah, that, that tickles your fancy, you know. But without any further ado, Jaga, uh, yeah, I don't want to know about anything. So how yeah, did you much up chop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do much up chop. So did you find my son? Do I? So how this game plays in Jaga? Maybe it's overrated or underrated. Okay. Get all got him, and then you tell me if it's overrated or underrated. Okay. And okay. maybe can I know one why you think that is? Okay. Yeah. So the first one here, I'll get elegated McKenzie. Um, I think underrated, right? So I don't know too much about it, but I've seen the gifts every when I'm on social media, right? Yeah. He seems to be the one minister who's rocking up at these small and and making sure that he's talking about the things tailoring a lot of people, 
relate, you know. So I don't know too much. It's just from the top of my head, from the clips. We now we saw clips. Yeah, so yeah. from the clips, uh, I think underrated. Yeah, that's fair. What's said. Um, networking events. Networking events also underrated, you know, because I think a lot of people think, no, I think I'm gonna go to places where I see but Baba Kruvan, Baba Irabairan. That's why I'm gonna meet the people that I know. Like for example, that one celebrity you wanna know, the one influential person you wanna know, and all that kind of stuff. You wanna meet them in a setting hello ring. There's like a lot going on. Yeah. Versus when it's at a networking event, these people are actually open yeah, to yeah. to you speaking to a stranger. Right, and I think that's why it is. because no one ever run into it. Yeah, they, they also want to meet strangers. Live on you what do you do, right? So, so, so. stand up comedy. I think underrated as well. <laughs> South African stand up comedy, right? Okay. Because what I about like, there's like people who are really killing it. They got really cool narratives, but I think the game out here in South Africa still needs to be elevated. Yeah, it shouldn't be just you know the small ad out rooms type of thing all the time and one or two big shows. There should be. A little bit drop the name for one of those guys. Uh, so for the longest time, me and my wife would always watch him pop ups, and he was always like, it was almost like he was up and coming for the longest time. But when you see like the amazingness that we see today, we we would watch his stuff before and be like, "What's this guy's one man show? It's a special that you can watch for a full hour. And it's just him, you know, on Netflix or yeah, DVD. You see how whatever you got. I remember that gay guy when he was coming up there. Yeah, <laughs> right, so he's an amazing guy, and he's one of the guys that I really watch, and I'm like, I'll be fellow left skin guy. Uh, and then, so book tour, book tour, then yeah, so that's still, I mean, I think everything is underrated, you know? <laughs> because books, first of all, just books alone are underrated. A lot of people don't read it, but people will always ask, even for me, for example, my book is hard copy only, but there'll always be people that, hey, isn't there audio book I can listen to while I'm driving? But, the experience of actually reading a book and flipping through the pages of a brand new book, it's like for people who are readers, that's unmatched. And I think to be able to do that, moving around at different places to audiences is definitely yeah, yeah. Um, AI-powered copywriting tools. I overrated. <laughs> <laughs> overrated. That's the, for sure, overrated. You know why? Because everybody's like, oh, you know what? You don't need to type your own email. You don't need to type your own report. Yeah. Uh, chat GPT, you know, and it's like for me, it's like there's certain things that you won't get from it. First of all, it's designed by people who are foreign from our country. I'm speaking for South Africa specifically, right? So if you were to write and write something that's South, truly South African, yeah. like you get the nuances of from Woma Oyedi to Woma Di, yeah, there's no way you're gonna do it with AI. I mean, yeah, I guarantee you, not today, as like you know, right now, as you said, you know, maybe in future it can progress. So, last to hear it, yeah. uh, Brandy. Branding, underrated, you know? Uh, and, the, and the thing is, it's because a lot of people understand it differently, right? For a lot of people, branding is, is it a logo, is it a picture, is it a this, whatever. But branding is also in the way you move around and the way you do your things, right? Yeah. The way you appear in certain places, the way, especially personal branding, right? Uh, the way you show up in places yeah. is your personal brand. The way you are eating at work, when you rock up, do you do a coffee first, do you run around? before you start opening your laptop or whatever, yeah. that's a brand right in itself. So I think it's underrated because a lot of people think just because like it, the, whatever I'm doing doesn't have a logo to it. Yeah, it's not a brand. But I give a talk about that are doing things that are actually brands that are not DM. Yeah. I think I was having a conversation with a friend of mine yesterday. Mm. We were just walking through a mall and I was like, I haven't been to a mall so long and I see a lot of graphics. And it got me thinking that, you know, branding is actually how people think and feel about brands yeah and everything else that you see it's just uh, it's just noise like, yeah, 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 you yeah, got yeah. no feature like like imagine when you're going to a mall and you went to your favorite restaurant that yeah. maybe your parents used to take you guys come and then yeah, sure, sure. you know it because there was that feeling oh when we get there then i get to go play meet other kids or strangers and not part and then you know my lady doesn't have to cook my lady when she's cooking we'll be like what you know <laughs> <laughs> so the brand is that feeling that you get out there, you know? So as much as we look at it as the pictures and visuals that we see and the logos, it's not that. It's actually that feeling. You know, that you right about. I always see. So LinkedIn. LinkedIn, super underrated. For a lot of people, I've had, I've had places where maybe I'm at a coffee shop or whatever and I'm, and I'm doing my thing. It's just because I'm on LinkedIn. 
people are like, hey, Joe, are you looking for spawn? And it's like, yeah. LinkedIn is not only for applying for jobs. So. It's actually the one place. So the reason why I appreciate LinkedIn is because it's different to your Facebook and Instagram, right? When on Facebook, let's say, for example, I wanted to link up with the CEO of whatever big company, right? If I go to Facebook, that's where they post their kids, birthday parties, or what's up. The chances of them accepting my friend request on Facebook are almost still because they don't know me. But on LinkedIn, because it's a professional platform, it's a place to network, they're more likely, because now they don't post they, their private life and their children and their wives and stuff. So they're more willing to actually engage with you in that kind of setting. So I think that's, it's a very powerful tool we let us see. So as a writer, uh, storytelling. <clears throat> storytelling. Storytelling is definitely also underrated, right? And I think, so I think it's both ways, right? Because there's certain types of storytelling that's overrated, right? If you look in advertising at the moment, a lot of people look at trying to be too different and it, 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 it actually becomes too far-fetched for the regular South African. How many times have you seen an advert where you watch the advert and then only until you see the logo at the end, then you're like, oh, okay. It's like, this is an insurance ad. Like the whole time there was a story. Yeah. Hey, this guy yeah. went to my car, did this, tremble a mountain. And you're like, okay, what's this about? Yeah. So you catch your curiosity because they're using the power of storytelling, but they're not capturing the actual essence of what they, the message they want to get to. So no, but I think that's also the important part of storytelling. And that's why I say certain stories are overrated, but like storytelling in itself is underrated. Yeah. Yes, sir. So I have long form content. Long form underrated. That's the <laughs> life right there. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm crazy. Like when I started writing stories called LinkedIn, people would always say like, but just, it, cause you know, on Instagram, it's different. And Instagram is like, God, why is oh, Yeah, sure. <laughs> they go, never hate. You know, it's like, it's like, there's that one light, uh, you know, you don't even have to say read more or whatever, right? But there's a space for people who actually want to get the behind the scenes or just a little bit more context around whatever that scenario that you're painting, right? Yeah. So I think for me, long form storytelling is actually quite important because it allows you to see even those small nuances that you wouldn't see from a situation. So I'll give you an example. So I go now, I go to waterfall and I have a great day. There's a great meal. Maybe I'm around great people, right? Yeah. And then I post, oh, God did, right? Sure. And then it's like, okay, God did what? You know what I mean? <laughs> if I do a longer form storytelling, I'm able to rather say, you know what? Uh, I was chilling, late guy. Guy, he said this, and he reminded me of a time where I did this, and then I, I choose a high, said this, and that, that's why I'm saying God did, right? But I don't get to see that if I just post the hashtag one. Yes, they got it. I'm gonna eat it. Yeah, eat it. That's the last one. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah. What feel like? Africa, Africa, yeah. yeah. So Africa is definitely underrated, right? Yeah. And I'm, and I'm, and I, what, what's exciting right now is seeing things like Amapiano taking over the world, right? Yeah. And people outside of the world being able to see for Africa is beyond worry. You know, when you watch National Geographic, there's some cheat. Then there's if the flies landing on that kid, and there's a lot more, right? And also, when you search South Africa and other places in Africa, and you search culture, you always find oh, damn, Zed, you know, it's always, and that's the case. We understand that that's where we come from. But there's culture that's happening right now that people will never see. If you've never been to Kosovo, you'll never see. If you've never been to Kosovo, to Vilagazi, there's a certain culture that even when you Google it. You will never fight. You know, I think that's why I say it's underrated because I was speaking from a perspective of a South African. Yeah, I can imagine if you're from Uganda, Rwanda, wherever you're at, yeah. there's also those things that we never see as well, even as fellow African. Amazing. Love to hear that. So, Fetu, that's how we come to the end of the house break. I yeah, hope yeah. the house yeah. 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 is broken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, is it broken? Is it broken? Yeah, Fetu. So, like, usually before we actually, you know, start getting deep into understanding. Uh, the who you are and the work that you do. Yeah, I, I, like I find it very, you know, like exciting to understand if people are living their purpose because I see you doing your thing, very mm -hmm. excited. And that's the kind of demeanor that you put out into yeah. the world, right? But deep down, when you are with yourself, do you feel like you're living your purpose? So for the longest time, I didn't feel like that because. I had to understand what my purpose was, right? I remember this one time, actually, I was sitting at home, my wife wasn't around, my kid wasn't around, and then that's when it actually hit me to be like, 
it's like, why, why am I doing all of this, right? Because you've got the house, got the car, got the kid, you got the everything. Obviously, you might answer waiting for me. <laughs> you know, we're still waiting for more ladies. But it's like, we've got all these things, but it's like, why are we doing it, right? Is it just to be able to come back home every day and then eat the sisha, what's the sisha? Yeah, go back and do the same thing the next day. And that's when I realized, like, for me, it's about, like, I've always, as the, like, even when I was a kid, it's always been about, inspiring people right and it's not it hasn't been deliberate it's always been just something that i learned over time where it's like when i'm around people what is it about me that makes them gravitate towards me right is it because uh, i'm just a light-skinned guy is it because maybe i'm doing other things is it because some of the things i have is it because you know and that's when i realized like for me my purpose, obviously, to be able to inspire, not necessarily inspire as in like, you're motivating, you're sitting today and then tomorrow you feel like you can do anything in the world. But just inspiring in the sense of, like you see this guy who every day is doing what she wants to do and what he plans to do and what he says he's gonna do. And whether it fails or it wins, he's gonna do it in here, right? And that kind of motivation is like, I think it, it's quite inspiration, right? Because now you see it like, and you're like, it's like my one to flow PV, but this guy let off flow PV one and he's still doing it tomorrow. I was about to give up tomorrow. Now let me do it as well. And I think that for me is when I realized that purpose and I feel like the more I'm I've been more intentional about it, the yeah. more it's actually been, you know, so so coming so, to that. So I hear how you actually want people to see you or you know, the impact that you wanna make in other people's lives. Who is that person who does the same thing for you? Like you look at this person, you're like, hmm, you you are a reflection of who I know. So, my lady, little Tamala, right? So, you must remember these two people are teenage parents, right? My lady was 15, 16 when she had me. Time I was like 17, 18, right? So, these people never remember what your bedroom, yeah, whatever. But Tamala has been the same guy, and my lady have been, has been the same woman, even when we're staying with your bedroom, yeah. right? It would be that vibe out just because we stay in a bedroom doesn't mean it's not going to be school. Sure, so that you should know, always tell it to that way. We're like, my lady, help me now. Heck, new thing to whatever she takes pride in everything she has, even though it's not a lot, right? And then Taiba is that person who's also a big dreamer. Like Taiba is like, oh, it doesn't matter. He walks into a room, <laughs> this is what I am. He's a little, he's a kid from where he had to walk like five, ten kilometers just to get to ice cream. A lot of people drop out, and even until now, that same neighborhood is still the same way. There's people where there's, there's technology, there's everything. Still time out, you can't. I don't can make a tour and that I get by lose draw. Yeah, with the Marasana, I was gonna get jealous a little time. I'm not the dewa. I decide what is the difference between that guy and the Tamil, right? Because they come from the same place, they both didn't have school shoes, they both didn't, they both the high school was yeah. same distance, whatever. So I look a lot like I look up to my parents a lot because they're those type of people who just have that spirit. Yeah, they're out of age, we had to do this, do this, do this. So I think actually what you're saying about the differences between the time and how and this guy, they're mm-hmm. actually presented by the same hardships, you know. Same problem. But I think um, goals are like the similarities around people. Mm-hmm. Anybody can dream. Yes. And, but, I, 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 but again, the edge to actually want to stand up and do something, like yeah. make it happen, I think that's what sets people apart because mm-hmm. not everybody has that within, in them, um, within them to say, for you know what? I want to achieve that, but I don't, that's not what I should be paying attention to because yeah. there's like a lot that needs to happen. Understanding that and like creating systems, say, or even like doing the hard things that, you know, that 99% aren't willing to yeah. end in order to get to the goal level. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, and it's important because it's that discipline. Because whenever I talk to the like, he tell me stories because so well, I feel like my growing up was higher, right? but it's different type of heart to hit. So, his type of heart was. You go home with Tata Vesalina, you go back there, no lunch. That was like, my heart chain is today I get a tea, I don't drink coffee because every day they get carrot tea. Every day, you understand? That's my heart chip. So yeah. it's a different level. Then now my son's hardship is 
man, he's got Oreos every day. So, <laughs> yeah, he's got Oreos. It's just every day. Like, why are you coming back at you know that? So, yeah. And I think those kind of things, that the golden thread throughout all of that is hardship is always going to be hardship and it's relative to people, yeah. but it's the discipline and the mindset that you give yourself. So, yeah. Because yeah. one day my son is going to be telling him to do a time and other things. Oreo. And for me, I'm trying to do more than what I got. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know, just bread, but at the end, him, let me give you Wario as well. But I know he doesn't have to do it, but like, it's hard shit for him. Because Jonathan is coming with strawberry oil. Every day, every day, every day. His mother is a food lover. Out of order, you are you're a conceptual copywriter, right? Yeah. And you've proved that, man, like yeah. the work that you've been doing. Yeah. And you've done some amazing work, Leo Spotify. Yeah. Off that, the yeah. rest. Uh, yeah. But the Spotify like, rap, yeah, twenty twenty one the word. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you worked out like you yeah. like you now with NetBank. Yeah, yeah. Amazing work though. Yeah. So I mean, to a ten year old, how do you tell them what conceptual copywriting is? So here here's what it is, right? So everywhere you go, you go to a mall, you see a sign, somebody came up with it. Yeah. You you turn in your TV, you see an advert, somebody came up with it. You watch a movie, somebody came up with it. You know, so obviously there's a lot of people who come up with concept, right? So from a conceptual copywriter perspective, we are the people who write the stuff, right? Uh, then you work with your art directors. Art directors are the guys who do the visuals, everything, whether it's a, a graphic, 3D, you know, whatever type of thing. So copywriters, we the guys who write the stuff. So any sign, billboard, advert that you see. You know, somebody had to come up with that. And that's what so, conceptual copywriting is. So, I'm a palan, yes. Yeah. For the people who are in the you can go to church. There's only that, that one who's the stripe. <laughs> and then, yeah. Just with a little bit more excitement. So, you know, yeah, yeah. Now, now I love to hear that gig. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you've always been writing. Yeah. Right. You have always been writing. So, if you, and then you get to a point where, now you have to apply it in a professional space, like mm. working with brands, the structure, obviously. So yes. how would you say you had to adjust, you know, your idea, your prior writing, but again, um, con ideas, right? Yes. About writing, just to, so to, to, to um, you know, like what the corporate space. Yeah. So, so obviously what you learn is when you're writing yeah. and you're writing for yourself, it's very different for when you're writing for somebody else, right? Yeah. So a client will come or a brand will come and say, look, my guy, this is what we try to achieve. We want to make sure that our brand actually gets people more excited. Maybe we want to add a bit more humor, X, X Y, Z, right? They have their targets of why they're doing this thing, right? Because maybe they did some research and somebody said, and it's like, the reason why they're not buying your chippies is because it's not fun. You know, right now everybody wants to laugh, type of thing, as an example, right? So now you look at that and as a copywriter, your challenge is to say, okay, there's what the client wants and there's my voice, yeah. which is why they're coming to me, right? Why they're coming to me is because they know I'm going to bring a little bit of humor. I'm going to bring a little bit of excitement. I'm going to bring a little bit of this. But at the same time, I can't sound like me because I'm not writing for me. I'm writing for this brand. Yeah. So I have to put myself in the brand's shoes to say, this is the brand. This is what they're trying to achieve. This is what they're going for. And actually come up with concepts and, you know, ideas that can match that. And, you know, the one thing that you learn early on is obviously in the beginning, you have to learn how to deliver exactly what they, what people want, right? Yeah. And ego becomes a bit part of it. Oh, I'm not too bad. I mean, <laughs> it's three part. It's a thing, right? Yeah. But when I'm writing for a brand, the brand manager might be like, oh, that's not as well. I am in case. It's a bit too dark. Can you bring it more, you know? And it's not because they're being weird or they don't understand the world because you got the world unlocked because of or blend no sleep. It's just that this is what they living every day and this is their brand. They know the people that have to approve this thing. They also have to buy into this to say, no, th we've got other things going on and we may have been a brand that's been there for 100 years. Yeah. We kind of now all of a sudden switch up to more and be lazy yeah, yeah, and yeah, H yeah. and whatever. We got to maybe ease people into it. So maybe, yes, after... Five years, we can do it to that extreme level. But for now, let's test that. I just want to add one or two lying in yeah. and there yeah. just to get the people there. That's kind of yeah. That's amazing, though. Now that we know the cool work that you do, yeah, we know a little bit of how you think about certain things. Yeah. Um, we want to understand you as a person. Yeah. Yeah. Because everybody has got their own personal story. Yeah. Uh, and 
if you you were to tell us a little bit about Katlakotilar way from the schools that you went to, you yeah. know, like the stuff that you picked up, uh, inspiration from Gorea, yeah. uh, what would that kind of look like? All right, so I'll take it back to the early stages, right? Early stages, uh, like I mentioned, I was obviously born to two teenage parents, right? So Lord Blobab with my dad in Kosiabe, other side of the world, if you've been to the other side, the other side, the other side, is that right? right? So that's what we're saying for Madrid and Abloma. That's where my maternal grandmother stayed. I'm our lady's mother and Abloma. And then obviously, then we moved into the timer because they started getting more Spanish. Then we lived with him at a back of all Varamba. Yeah, Bila Bila. And that's why I went to Crepes, right? Mother, this crash is not that I like, kind of <laughs> like, I remember, like, like I can remember it in my head. Like, there was there was a Venyan El Tamalara. So, what was interesting about this crash is that. It was owned by an Indian guy who was married to a black lady, right? His surname it was Guvari or whatever, something like that. The Indian guy married to a black lady. But we all know Indian people sometimes <laughs> they cut it the cost, right? So the, the people who work at the crash, the lady who actually used to cook us porridge or whatever, she loved the chibu. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. So she would literally send us as the Ntwara. And you know, Bukasi, it's actually nice because as a kid living in Kukasi, you learn about money very quickly because she can give you five rand and say, Jigara, the tablet, buy me, and uh, let party, whatever, come back, you know. But the one that the specific guy that she liked was called Zebra. Yeah. You know? yeah. And those were our necessary rights. Right? <laughs> hey, Zebra, 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 you know. That was us growing up, but it, was, it didn't seem like there was anything wrong with it because, like, this is everyday life. And what can she And like, the money is Zebra, hi. She cooks good porridge for us, and we go, right? And then we actually moved to the city. That's where we moved to uh, Davidson, which is another class because Bila Bila, the Kasi and I, it's a bit rural as well, right? Yeah. Um, versus Kasi Apo, uh, Davidson, which is in the East Rand. So, you know, this is a real Kasi where there's Konti, there's everything. That's where I also just finished off my credit and other than we moved to uh, Benoni. I went to Benoni Junior, went to Benoni West, Benoni High. That's kind of like, yeah. So, so, uh, like so now how the school's different because no like Kasi, you know, uh, like, haha. <laughs> How did the bite? So that cultural change, yo, yeah, no, it's a, a huge change because yeah. first of all, I felt judged Hege Kroagwa Kasi to go to the burbs yeah. because we, think about it, we're staying in the burbs now, we're still living in the back of all, right? So, Mara Machita will be like, oh, no, chill, boy. Yeah. So, so, I went, 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 like, in the burbs because now you're going to school, there with Jason, Jason and them, but, uh, uh, Game Boys and, you know, I don't know if you, you know, like the dragonfly, there was these other toys you used to be able to, to pull the vibe. Yes, and then the thing, oh, uh, yes, 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 cool, yes, yes. they got all of that. But you come from a background, I'm, I'm staying in, this, in the town now, in Veroni town, and the CBD, but we're staying in a back room. So, because I'm still playing with bricks, pretending that it's a cop. But I during school, <laughs> I have to go and play with the they got the dragonflies or whatever. And I remember this one time we went to... Uh, Jason's birthday party, Jason's there, you know, we're having a good time, you know. Then we're chilling in Jason's room. Jason's like, yo, mom, bring us a stand. <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, okay, this is the life. I must try this at home, but I forget now what I'm like, my, I'm just a Hebrew, I was like, but I don't say that. But lady, you know, come to the party, bus love. So those are some of the things that you realize that, ah, no, it's, yeah. it's not the same, you know, but you have to deal with two audiences now because now, Kim Ajji Double Guys you think that you're a cheese boy but you're still living in a bedroom oh. then there's good cheese and we're like yeah, what a friend this is really cool cut clear up you know like it's like you know yeah yeah I mean uh, that's kind of like quite interesting so now you you you're kind of you make friends with what Jay said mm. and you move to your high school yeah uh, how how is it like yeah so high school high school is definitely very different because now high school you must remember now as a kid especially in primary you don't realize we're at home, you don't have certain things, right? Yeah. Because everybody's wearing pro action, everybody's wearing red. Uh, what is that Jets brand? Do you know what? Everybody's wearing the same thing from Akamens, Mr. Price, everything, you understand? But when you get to high school, that's when you're, some of your friends are buying Adidas, Nike, what do you know? And then you ask your parents, hey, Julian, let me go buy Adidas. But I'm a small three. Then you come to your Adidas, the first one, you know, but you tell me, like, yo. Oh, and then, then, that's only when you realize, that, oh, the D in your Adidas section, the other one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I Because like, we were so excited that Balani bought you. Yeah. You didn't even see the spelling mistake when you were like, oh, boy, what's going on? So that's when you actually realize, that, oh, no, there's differences. Because now in high school, you also have, now you have your, some of your black friends 
who are also now coming from parents who been living with Bujis. They got the money. They got whatever, you know. So they, you know, maybe Mangmanu brothers got a car in the metri. You know, you're cruising with him, brother. He's a cool kid because now, you know, now girls are also looking at you differently. Like, how ah, are you? We came to your house. We came to your house party. Because like, you know what was crazy for me in high school, right? So when we when I started high school was when Tamara first bought an actual house, right? So when we go to high school, this is the first time we're moving from a back room to a house. So now we've got back room furniture moving into a house. So there's more rooms. Mara, the furniture, get it out. There's no couch in. Because of course, back room, never will be a TV for more big one, but the person like for so you don't need a couch, but now you now I'll pop out and throwing a house party because I'm in the burbs. I invite people and I remember these other girls, they come from St. Thomas to Friday. They rock up. Yeah, uh, one of the girls is actually pretty famous, I won't mention it, right? So they rock up with their friends and whatever. And it's like, yo, oh, okay, cool. We coming through to to Gatlego's house, hey, he's throwing a house party of goop. The Kasi friends, but if you out Kwan Tamu, he didn't need any high ease, kind of was a name like high ease. Rock up, I own that, and I will add no young man, you know, when I'm a little bit see that. They don't mind the fact that they rock up their space. For them, it's like, ah, yeah. But for the private school girls, it's like, oh, yes, they will be like, ah, this, this TV, next, what are we? We just have a bit like color TV, like that. It's like, you know, so those type of things kind of make you feel weird at the person being like, now, now we're now we in the burrows, but now. I'm playing at a different league. Yeah, you know, my friend, but sure. They're they parents, you well. feel like a cool your friends don't find them. Right? They're not cool yeah. at all. But like the way you look at my background, like you're coming from a bedroom, not so, a house so. with a pool. Like, <laughs> you said, have the room. Like, I, like, we still don't, like, I remember at some point, my parents knew what I could do. Yeah, but they used to throw house parties as well. That's why I started throwing house parties. Right? Yeah. So when they would go, they'd throw house parties. And then it would be that by the, there's camp chair. Now we still go to the end room, got a camp chair. <laughs> and then I'm like, I. Meet them in. Before we go to the house, we were getting that one. <laughs> oh, what did they want me to do? Oh, what did they want me to do? Right. <laughs> yeah, no key, I'm from Bidoni, but I'm not sure I'm from Bidoni. All right, so I'm not sure. So, I mean, for now, what now inspires you to say, well, okay, so I want to become a conceptual copywriter. Our an MC yeah. at that time. Like, yeah, so it? so that's obviously still early days, right? So at that time, uh, I used to do a lot of uh, singing competitions, poetry, whatever. Yeah. And then, God, I went really high, and I'm seeing the poetry. Is Thanks, the yeah, singing is not, it's not, awesome. you're singing and, oh, man, man, you know, some classical artist or whatever. Yeah. So for me, I didn't enjoy it because now this was an era where, you know, step up and you got served or popping, you know, everybody is now starting to wait. I remember I even had this one out today again for starting a pro action. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A pro action and then a so, so, so. pro action shed pro action <laughs> tricks with pro action salt. Pro action <laughs> sneaker, you know, from yeah. Edgar. So I was like, yo, my mother's like, can't give me easy to see, you know? And, and I thought like, that was the vibe. So I thought like, okay, let me do something that's exciting because I can see also my friends that break. They're also, uh, what's this? They're also doing cyphers and dance battles and all of that, right? Yeah. So I'm like, okay, let me maybe host my own shows at that point, you know? Yeah. So I uh, obviously approached the principal. She said, no, you can't use this book. I approached the community hall. They said it was like 2.9 to ink. I don't know, 2.9. But then uh, I got forced. I hooked up some friends. We got together. I found the 100 plan, 100 plan. We threw our first talent show. Yeah. And that talent show got bigger, 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 bigger. We're doing festivals, you know? Until the point where I was doing one of my biggest festivals, which is East Strasbourg Festival. And it's fair, this many. Because yeah. with these festivals, you don't know what are the T's and C's. You have to come with a, uh, a you make sure your your uh, local authorities are, are, are informed, your hospitals, yeah, everything, how many toilets per what, what, how many securities per under people, right? It's like, hey, Joe, I'm only like my 19 at this point. So yeah. I don't really know any of that stuff. So we get shut down, right? And, um, that, what, what I realized from that, because it was a big fail, because it was also before social media was too big, right? Yeah. So even though we had announced on social media, this festival is cancelled. On the day of the event, right, that was the, um, we've getting quantum, really quotani, you know, and all that. Well, people it's like, can we find out about that? We've been, 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 now I'm standing there and I'm like, okay, the facility manager, if you guys want to set up with me. How did it sell? Because it didn't make money? 
No, so it failed because we the event was cancelled because the the venue was like you told us it was a talent. Yeah, and you know what actually gave us away. So I thought I'd be creative in terms of getting extra marketing leverage, right? Yeah. So I didn't have enough money to get advertising on radio, but I knew Rico IFM. What they do is they always announce their presenters or where they're gonna be that. So I booked everybody. I booked them as Cosmo, Waras, Dimo Flavor. There was a, I think, no, not say wasn't there. Like there was a couple of DJs that we booked there. Uh, DJ Zanti, Manma. So we booked them all so that the whole week, YFM, DJ Zanti, yeah. So, so, has so, been so. On DJ Waras. I remember even going to do a video with Waras because it was a promo vibe. He was still driving with my, some uh, Velocity City Golf Nyada Wipers before, you know. It, so it was like early days, you know. And because of that, now this facility manager obviously is hearing it from his kids. Maybe he's on the radio and he's like, oh, mm. this thing is not a talent show. This is that's yes. This is on the radio, you know? Had they always get out of the Yeah. So then he shut us down. So now, because he shut us down, now on the day of the event, which is going to be the 28th of September in 2012, right? Yeah. Now we're sitting there and there's metros. For Damanori, if you set up, you see, there's like seven metro cars with relation of your taking this. I'm like, I am too light skinned to go to jail. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I've got tough enough for this. I'm too light skinned, but it's not too thin. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I, so, I'm, so I'm obviously trying to even know, like, okay, maybe he could drink in Yana, but I think he already had his cold drink from wherever he got it from. Yeah. So he was like, nah, my boy, this is not happening. So it failed. So now I spent six months promoting this. You know, and we've been going to meet up with all these DJs, boom, bang, bang, doing videos, promoing, whatever. And it was at a time where social media wasn't so big, so we're still doing pamphlets directly to people, yeah. going to schools, campuses, whatever. If there's a Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. What What, they're giving up flyers, everything, right? Yeah. And that was the flavor, right? And then it failed because it didn't happen. So I'm standing at the stadium, and here the metros, here's the terminal, there's a convoy point. We even had a media partner who was Benoni City Tab, which is the local newspaper. Yeah. Now, now they even put us on the front page. You will feel me. Hey, whoa. I once have to chat like one boy. Yo. Oh. We're standing at the stadium and it's like, yo, my life is over. Because now, like, how do you come back from that? Because you're failing publicly, right? Yeah. Now you got to walk around and face people who saw you last week living your yeah, with I was like, ah. <laughs> well, and you know, black people are like, hey, I don't know if like on. Well, how do you think, why would you dream so big? You know, like, those are the kind of things. So you end up sitting in the house and not actually going to meet people, right? And that's when I was like, you know what? What do I actually enjoy about all of this stuff? I enjoy the marketing more than the event. Because the event day, you are in about the EJ Mangmabar, Kui Cheno Salo Rastan, ACPG, that type of performing the next hour. That's the stuff that you worry about when you do events, right? Versus the actual marketing, that takes six months. That's when you're meeting people. That's when you actually get to test your messaging, all that kind of stuff. And that's how I actually realized that maybe the advertising and the marketing stuff is where the direction I should put it. Yeah. Yeah, I see, I see. And where do you get like now your first break to say, okay, shout, maybe the marketing is the way for me to go. And like, who gives you that first opportunity to say, let's see what you can do. Yeah, so maybe one or two months. So after that event failed, then, uh, we thought, because it failed and I'd already told some of the vendors who are selling at the event to say, uh, listen, uh, we, we've got 2,000 ads in our guy. No, the, the vendor. <laughs> Not Bender. <laughs> not Bender. Not Bender. Oh, okay. Bob and <laughs> Benders. <laughs> so Benders. <laughs> so the Benders, we tell them, we're like, okay. So I've told the Benders. And when I say Benders, I'm obviously just loosely putting it. It's mainly moms and I'm who maybe run a tuck shop. But they were like, oh, there's this festival. Let me maybe go sell there because it's one big day. And we already told them how many pre-sold tickets. We showed them company ticket statements, all that kind of stuff. So some of them pre-cook stuff and whatever, right? And then it doesn't, and it flops. It fails completely, you know? And looking at that, it's like, now you got cops rocking up at the house because they bring in the because they adults. I'm still almost my daily doing right at the attack. So they adults, so they bring in lawyers in, in vault because I remember there's a chip in there. Oh, I'm like, you know, so getting lawyers in vault or we're not really sorry, nee, nee. Your contract give me speak other than Google. Because I'm a kid, I obviously don't have a lawyer. I Googled yeah. contract for vendors. You know that? I found it. And now you start seeing the flow. Even they start seeing the flaws in the contract. You're like, no, but this talks about in the state. The yeah. In the state. <laughs> like, this is what's happening to you. I'm like, how is this, you know? But because at the time when you're pushing, I picked, not, nobody looked at the season seeds, you know? But now that, okay, things have failed, 
Now they're going back and looking. Now they're getting the lawyers to look. And it says, there's no clause there. What are you giving back in case it fails or whatever? Which is also part of what say we there wasn't no agreement around if it fails, what must happen, right? Um, but now there's also cops rocking up, whatever. But in that whole turmoil, I get a call from a guy called Richard Ramazuli. Okay. He's a, um, a CEO of uh, Tico Events. They really massively dance in South Africa. Well, now they just, uh, at the time, they were just doing Carnival City, right? Yeah. And he's like, man, I love the way you promote your event. Do you provide those services? And that's not even something that I was thinking, you know? So I'm like, yeah, 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 sure, I'm sure I can send it. How about you charge? So I started working with him, you know, doing easy bands. So we're doing big gigs, you know, singing there was book has put where's Lake Kitty or what about singing his comedy shows, international stuff and whatever. And it grew and because now I'm the guy helping with the promotion for that. Yeah. Now I'm getting restaurants, I'm getting this and this and that. And that's when I realized like and like there's a yeah, I don't know where I can so, actually put. So, yeah. yo, fam, like you've been through so much now. Like booking, like such big people, I'm sure it cost you a lot of money. And so at the time, obviously, I was doing the marketing for the event, but he would as the event. No, and I, mean, I mean your event. Yes, like, yeah, your event. Oh, back at the time, yeah, 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 yeah. people, and now there's no event, and now people are coming after you. You're a kid. Yo, they want to man yo. you know. So like, like uh, how does that affect you, like mentally going into? Your next span. Are you still confident that I am well or now? Wish? Not at all, because at that time you must remember because we also went to war Aras for Mang videos. They also hyped up now, right? Because yeah. like maybe it's also their first time doing some behind the scenes video promotion so, stuff. So that's why they're willing to do it, you know? Type of thing. So they also talking about it on their shows to say, Hey, yo, you know, just outside of the gig guide, yo man, doing Saturday and show, show, show. Gonna be big. Maybe it's his big first big festival as well you know yeah so now after the event it doesn't happen first of all you don't get your money back because we pay you whatever so that's cool but also now you're hearing on the radio oh phil promoter yeah my people will hype you up because now he was also hyped up or other people also hyped up you know so you hear that kind of stuff from all the same way we got the hype from all the presenters now it's now it's the negative you know and now it's hard to kind of face people because it's like this guy he was cruising around like he knows (laughs) everything because that's the other thing like Obviously, when you're pushing your stuff with confidence, yeah. it becomes like, ah, you know what you, you know everything about everything. But that's what you learn over time as well. It's like, you don't have to put it out there. Right now, my mind, I'm like, I'm figuring it out. But don't even so you don't have it up. So we're all figuring it out, you know? Yeah. So it definitely messed up with the confidence for a bit. But I think getting that call to say, my boy, the marketing is actually really amazing. Mm. That's when, that's something like getting a different perspective from someone else. Because everybody around me is like, ah, I don't know, you will throw another event. Yeah. So I could have, in that sense, if I didn't get the call, I would have been still fighting to try and throw another easy giant screen at first song. You know what I'm saying? Whereas now I found an angle that I actually managed to discover what I'm really great at, which is right. obviously concepts and marketing and, and advertising, really coming up with, our big ideas that excite people. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. So now, personal again, I was planning uh, with that guy. How how do you approach your marketing? Because like obviously he says you're great. Mm-hmm. You know, you've been pushing your work. You're really amazing. Like then, mm-hmm. how do you approach it? Like for instance, if you were to give somebody a blueprint around how you do your work. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So a lot of times, obviously, so when you get a brief from, especially for with the mega birds, right? Yeah. So the example that you gave by the Spotify. So how, how that worked was, you know, I get a call to say, hey, man, you know, we like your flavor, you right or whatever. We've got the Spotify rap campaign. For those who don't know, Spotify rap is that end of the year situation that tells you what day is to be living, yeah. listening to it. What is fun about that uh, um, project is that what they give you from uh, the, the client side, they give you the data. Yeah. They give you. Let coffee was make ten million times to do one this song. I know, like that's cool. Ask is we yeah, yeah, yeah. but I feel like we are really downplaying the fact that Ospanne was Spotify rap. <laughs> you get a call, yo, Katel, but we like what you do. Yeah, would you be willing to jump on this project? How do you receive that? So at that time, we already like because I've already been doing the LinkedIn stuff and I'm cruising. Yeah. Or what I know, I've been getting free stuff from brands. I've been getting writing gigs from brands. So. At that point where the Spotify came, it was it wasn't like it wasn't like it's it's like the first gig. It's like I've done a couple things, you know, a bank here, this there, or whatnot. And then you're like, oh man, now people are and it built the confidence. So obviously when you get that call now, now you need that chip. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
Yeah, yeah, that came to sound. Oh, no, you're on my flavor. <laughs> <laughs> then you hang out there like, no. <laughs> and I was trying to do this, obviously, through the agency that works with Spotify, all right? So this agency, there's a lady who hit me up, Jessica Wheeler, who was the MD at the time. So she hits me up. Never met her a day in my life. And she called me, the friend, I've been seeing her stuff, following my stuff, and I'm like, maybe it's a sign I should call, it, you know, because I'm looking for somebody who's going to bring a little bit of, because what they wanted was, Local flame, yeah, but also keeping the same messaging construct that's been approved globally, yeah, right. So it's been done in the USA, the U, the UK, other countries as well. But now it's for Africa. So I understand. So the other challenge was now I've got a cater for SA, Kenya, Nigeria, a couple other African countries because that Spotify Africa campaign. Yeah. So I need to take those same insights to say this this uh, song played this many times. This was the name of the song. Mm-hmm come up with lines, you know, and because uh, the con- the messaging construct there at the time was that in 2021, it's normal to do X, Y, Z, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I would do things like, ah, in 2021, it's normal for Mjolo mm-hmm. to make you Ghanaian because oh, that's the Makati stuff. And Makati. then, yeah, Makati stats show up, you know. Oh. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, it's 2021 to listen to a, to a song as a fire band being here. It's like one thing, type of thing. So I would take that, but now I think the taking it to a next level was being able to now, you're taking a Tanzanian art. You don't know the language, you don't know Swahili. Like, we'll transmit in your age. Right? Then I watch social media and try to find things that maybe black moms do universally, like, you know, making you fresh that about. It's not a South African thing. You know, back in the day, as kids growing up, we were the involved. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> the mom, so even if she's sitting here in the world, you know, and you ain't three rules to you. No, they were calling you. What's wrong with you? I'm not telling you about this. You're for that. So that would happen. I actually discovered that it happens everywhere across the continent. You know what I mean? So now you use those kind of insights to try and make a message that actually resonates, even if they see it on a billboard somewhere in Tanzania, somewhere in Nigeria, somewhere in whatever. And it was quite exciting because I think what I did, obviously, because what I try and do, my number one thing is presentation. Is like when I share the copy deck, when I share it with the client, I also put the translation because I'm understanding that the person who's approving it is from New York. Yeah. But so if I'm talking about is it for your one being, they don't catch it like that. They don't even they don't really know what I'm talking about. But when you break it down for them, say, oh, okay, now again, like yeah. it makes sense. I don't understand the language, but if this is what it means. Legal can approve because there's lots of layers, right? Legal must approve, I'm not approve, because they don't want to have that situation at each and them where you know, could have in the glide situation. So, those are some of the things that make it a bit fun to do what I do. So, so, so back to what you were telling us uh, about uh, how you develop your concept. Yeah. yeah, so obviously, with my concepts, it's like I always look at when I write, I, I picture the person that I'm writing, yeah, because I know I'm not writing for me anymore. I'm writing for somebody who's going to read this. So when I picture that person, I think about what's going to make them excited. What's going to make them like, let's say, for example, I was doing something for social media, right? If I was scrolling on Instagram and I was looking at my car, I see <laughs> people, what would make me stop? You know what I mean? Yeah. What would make me, because my crush, so I, like the scenario that I always put to my head is like, my crush is sitting next to the pool in his swimming costume versus your advent. You know that? Am I gonna pass that? Am I gonna leave the swimming pool to look at your advert, or will I actually still look at your advert? You know. Yeah. So when I write, I think about that kind of stuff. To say, and also when you're presenting it, that's another thing that I look at is when we're pitching and presenting. I look at when I'm presenting it, are the people in the room feeling the same level of excitement as I am? Because but what about it means even the end consumer. Because right now, when you present your concept, you're presenting it to marketing managers, CMOs, whoever. But the end consumer is somebody different, yeah. who doesn't care about the brand, who might not even worry about the brand. So how do I get, if they're excited and they resonate, they, that means they can also tell a friend about it and then friends should get excited. And that's the main thing that I look for. Yeah. Are we, are we. So like being a creative in Jag, I like, oh, I've been through this so many times where now you've been working on a project for like a week. And then now I please that day and day, the CD, it's like, that can crush you. No, I know, you yeah, know? Yeah. That can crush you. I think me being as a creative, initially, like, that made me feel like maybe I chose their own career, mm. you know? But after having been through that so many times, you tend to understand about it. It's not personal. Yeah. Right? 
And it doesn't mean her because when you are the creative, everything that you create it will already be and it should be called and everybody should go with it. Yeah. There's things that you can still learn from people. That's why creatives sometimes are, you know, there's teams, mm. you know, there's Panarati team, uh, there's like strategy, there's like legal, like there's a lot of layers yeah. to coming up with like a piece, a level will represent different. Yeah. So for you in your time uh, working with, uh, you know, corporate, what would you say has been like the biggest challenge that made you question is this what i want to you know do yeah i didn't choose the right uh, yeah so i mean it's a very similar thing so obviously in the early days you 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 have to learn how to take feedback right yeah but also you get to a point where you also gain experience as a creative because i think a lot of people don't look at creativity as a science yeah right so they look at it as, a, as this thing where you're sitting getting inspiration then you're seeing rainbows and tiles and then all well, like this idea hits you and then when you present it, they're not thinking that you're thinking about are there KPIs or are there certain things that you need to tick the box to, to keep the lights on, you know? Yeah. So me at the point where I'm at at the moment, it's the biggest challenge is I, I understand a lot of things because I've worked with different types of brands from food stuff to banks to this to that. So when you get in a space where maybe people don't really see that, they, they look at because like I know you're looking up at the creative vibe, he, you know, he let let a man out. That's cool vibe. So they're not thinking of it as a side. So when you present certain things, they think maybe you're presenting it from a point of like being naive and you're just pushing happy vibes. Yeah, it's not it's not based on anything. And but I think over time, what you do learn is you have to always base your ideas on a certain insight that you can back up. You know, certain so stats to say, look, uh, in in a setting. Out of the people that look around as a room, if you ask anybody in the room if they do X, Y, Z, they'll say yes. You know, just yeah. in the immediate room that we had, ask another maybe 20 people outside. If you get the same yes, it means that this is based on a reality. It might not be a scientific documented type of thing. Sometimes it might be something that's more, a little bit more on a human level. You yeah. say, hey, Drew, we all know Ramadi so so to get it out the glass bottle, you must put it upside down or fucking left at the whatever. It's not a science, you understand? But everybody does it, you know? It's either you put it upside down or you put some more to type of thing. So those kind of things, when you then come up with an insight and then come up with an idea, that's where the challenge comes. You know, so I guess over time you get to learn how to manage certain things because sometimes you're pitching to people who are completely outside of the creative space. Yeah, so especially, I mean, if you deal with your strategist, your creative director, they're within your creative space, right? But sometimes when you're presenting to a guy who's the CFO, so yeah. he's thinking about our, the sales. When do they... <laughs> and it's like, I said, when do they come in? You don't put that time. But it's like, you have to first sell me the vibe or whatever. They didn't even know, but we're spending money so on that, right? People, when do they quit buy? You know but it's like, those are some of the things. But also, that's what's important about also working with also those type of people are on that level that are quite clued up and experienced as well. So they understand, or yes, the the the, the goal and the ultimate thing is yeah. to sell. But before we sell, you know, it's like dating. Before we reach all, I said today when I date you, what's going on? You know what I mean? So those are some of the things that you kind of learn to work around as well, yeah. So practically, like, can you uh, remember that moment? Like, like, like practically, like, can you remember that moment when you were crushed? And yeah, absolutely. Like I'm crushed all the time, like every day. So, uh, so I mean, look, so we had uh, this one campaign that we were doing uh, for one of the, you know, brands and stuff like that uh, a while back. And it was one of those situations where the creative team, we believe so much in the idea to say, this idea, Drew, like, ask, look around, ask around. <laughs> like, everybody is going to love this, right? And it was also other creators who were like, ah, I'm not like, ah. So, but but cause also you also learn some of these things about egos or whatever in the creative space because maybe you are a luri winning mangma, you know? Yes, on paper, yes, the stats and whatever. But sometimes a good idea is a good idea. It's not about who it comes from. So sometimes in creative spaces, it becomes about like, I'm going to crush it just because it you and me yeah, cannot get you be the luri guy because now this is a luri winning <laughs> So I have to make it me. So I have to crush it and then come back and represent and be like, maybe you can do it like this. But it's like, but that's exactly what I said, right? That's the exact same idea. It's just that you repackaged it just so that now it can be like, who did I? So 
what are the goals, especially in creative agencies and stuff like that, those ego would always be the big thing where it's like, who, whose idea was. Yeah. But for me, it's like even the art directors that I work with in, in terms of campaigns, that agencies, whatever, the, it was always that situation where we work on it together. Because that agency, there's also sometimes that the buyer, the copywriter, he's going to come up with a concept and then the art director is going to come up with the visuals. Yeah, but how my working process is, if you're going to come up with the visuals, I just put it on this thing together, yeah. right? And then so that while we coming up with the idea, we think about how we can make it look vision. Rather than you have an idea, now you forced, whether you believe in the idea or not, you're forced to make this idea a reality versus when uh, we came up with it together. Now, even when you think of your visual, you can come back and say, no, maybe from a message, messaging perspective, let's make the copy a little shorter because I'm thinking they're on the clipboard, okay, fast or you know, type of thing. So those are some of the things that you kind of deal with. It becomes a little bit of a, you know, back and forth for your dicks in the but you know, yeah, man, 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 get it. So kind of king, I, th I think I saw this piece on, was it on LinkedIn where uh, they, there was like a driver's license and an avocado. Oh, no, no, there was an avocado and the copy read, uh, your boyfriend has a license, but does he? That picture. Oh, avocado. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. And, and I think this is like when a, a, a copywriter and a designer are so right. Right. see, right? Because I... If, if I was thinking about it, you want it. Yeah. I wouldn't have pictured it like that. You so, know what I'm saying? No. Versus when you're working together as a team, then your heart director can say, no, but like, yeah. what if we put like, but yeah, yeah, then yeah. you don't say, you don't write, it has a card. Yeah, yeah. I'm a <laughs> card. Remember the size of the thing. Oh, my. <laughs> they give me a little card, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a size of the thing. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's quite an interesting vibe, especially when, you find people that you really gel with as well. That, sure. that creativity you can bounce back and forth. And there's no bad idea, you know, because yeah. you can come up with something. You know, our director's like, no, Mara, I think they're going to this. So then when you try it, you're like, actually, this is even better than the way I thought it was. You know, so you learn to let go of the emotion part of it and, you know, really just bounce around and just play around with the idea. Yeah, it's not about you. Yeah, it's not about you. It's about that. And that's an audience that I'm excited, you know. The so, cool. so, Kat, Tanev Kala, I actually... I uh, spoke about lockdown, maybe by Kitty Short. Lockdown is that I. Mm -hmm. Your story is very interesting because I think when you started doing something different was mm -hmm. during lockdown. Yeah. You know, and I wonder what was happening in your life during that time. Maybe tell us more about it. You started putting out these cool stories about brands. Yeah. You know, like once you see this yellow post, you know that I'm going to read something fun, yeah. strategic, yeah. very comedic, you know. So. When do you decide that I'm going to do this thing? What sparked that idea? What did it look like? How did you come up with, you know, how you presented it to the people? Did you think it was going to work? Did you see somebody do it before? Yeah. And what was like, what impacts did it have in your life? Yeah, so it's, it's kind of crazy, right? Because I think on the day when they announced the lockdown, yeah, I'm really, I remember it was, I remember we were sitting at the house, two of my friends, two of my best friends came through. Uh, one stayed in Victoria, one stayed at the East Street, right? So in the right region, for some reason, like we didn't even know that house was supposed to happen, right? So they come through, there's uh, an announcement, they get locked down or whatever. And I remember we were standing outside, and I remember the yeah, I think we did it there. Wasn't it a cop? What did he do? He did outside the two room in the house that I was ringing to go the XX that I was in social. And then I remember telling him, I'm like, oh, okay, like right now, I know it's, it's about to be a little bit tough or whatever. But we'll figure out. But I didn't understand the extent of because I just thought that twenty one days took a walk, right? Yeah. Uh, then that twenty one days becomes five months, you know, a couple months or whatever. And you know, at the time I was doing a lot of freelance uh, copywriting, so it was like now you're hitting up the agencies and people. Hey, Joe, isn't it that in yeah. voice? So we're like, hey, small boy. <laughs> maybe after 21 days, maybe after 30 days, maybe after business. Yeah, business is bad for everybody, you know, because everybody's just figuring out that and people are dying, people are whatever. You know, that same person that you check up on the invoice, you don't know if maybe they just lost a family member and they just in a different space, you know, they're not thinking about you all kind of got you know, <laughs> as discussed <laughs> as on the full song, hey, you've been paying, you know, type of thing. So it became a bit tough because then now invoices are not getting paid. Uh, things are going downhill and I remember the one day 
it was um load shit, you know, and it's all down at the same time. Yo, she's fine. And double wear me off. I'm chilling with my son, go to the room. My wife is an essential worker. She's gone, go spanning. So she was working at a factory there, go spanning. Uh, so she's an essential worker. Obviously, the routine in the morning was we walk her to the bench. Yeah, I know. Have a great day. <laughs> <laughs> so you stayed on the road. I stayed on the At first, I used to drop her off. Right. Yeah. But now, because I cannot say my conquest thing doesn't work. Because he said Brahman, man, Brahman man said butt plugs. Then he said Kauri, something oil filter. Then until the car wasn't moving too tight. Right. I said now it's staying now in the yard, uh, and I had even drop her. So I have to take a good adventure in that sort of adventure. Go to go spanning and then 1930 break during the day. That was then, like, yeah. But over time, it's like, you know, now I'm like, okay, it's, it, it was one of the days where it's like, I'm even asking them for Zaraya just to move around. Like, hey, to move your and I was so bad, you know, and she's like, nah, 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 I'm asking for money from my name. Like, you know, it's tough. It's tough because it's like you're supposed, as, especially as a black man, you're supposed to need the head of the house. You know what you got? You know, then thought I had no, it's not hard for me to see those. You know, he borrows the money. What about from my lady? You know what I'm saying? That is my lady, the boss of the house. So, yeah. type of thing. So, one of the days it's, it's load shedding, it's locked down. Uh, the donor says he's hungry. And then I'm like, okay, cool. Let me make him some crib right now with the corn flakes because we don't have actual milk. Or tough of yes, yeah. right? And I make it with cold milk. It doesn't dilute. <laughs> uh, tomorrow, <laughs> sitting on top of the conflict, you know, I thought I get my body. And I went like, you know, and I'm like, okay, this is kind of great, you know. Take out the daughter. I give it to him. He's obviously looking at it. <laughs> like, oh, like, oh, nah. He's all I need. You want to appreciate the election? Like, okay, you know what? Let's put this down. I find some coins in the house with the two and three on there, chilling around. Go to my friends, the party goes through, you know, right. just to run me until they truly come back. But while we there, there's another young girl, I think she probably was like a teenager, you know, she's there to buy one with pamper, you know. Yes. And I'm like, yo, my situation is tough, but like, I know how tough that can get because I'm like, my kid at that time when he was like maybe four, right? Or, so he he wasn't too far away from the age of pamper. So I just tell her, you can put on a baby's pampers now and they mess it up right in time. So I'm like, <laughs> This girl, like, how have you tried out? Like, who's trying out? Like, you know, and I'll be like, my tata, I got my vibe, but it's like, yo, get my tata, you know. But then I realized that I'm looking at my surrounding. And also, there's a couple of things that builds up to that moment, I think, as well, where I'd go to be maybe doing groceries. And then when you go shop right, they call it XX it up by Tondri. There's Wuma Kamees are coming to do groceries, right? Yeah. So I'm having a, a trouble life because maybe you're not who's giving me grocery money. Right? But she gave me what one point eight to yeah. do groceries. I'm buying the fish. Yeah, you know, yeah. I to make that down yeah. date for me because I'm like, you know, we used to usually buy, you know, a so three. Never about fish. You understand? Now. But I'm buying three or four flavors of fish. You should buy a full trolley and grocery was pretty cheap during lockdown. So I had a full trolley, and then here's my greens. How your life is dead. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. My problem in life is that since I must, when I, after I go out with my full trolley, I must go pay a venture 20 run just for me and my son, and then 20 run to drop us off at the gate, pay to the groceries, because trying to you know? So, but at the same time, there's a Magriza who just came to buy a maize meal, cooking oil, and maybe just make stairway hat. So yeah. you're thinking, yo, like, this, this is not even going to last a week. This is it's just for today, because you're buying this one and I, you know, you don't know how many members of the family are that kind of stuff. Right? To see, we want to be like all the days, you know, coming to do that was like really painful. So it was a lot of things building up to that moment. And I realized, or oh, it's like, this can't be my life. You know, I have to do something that's going to switch everything up. And then that's when I actually started writing the stories on the LinkedIn. To sure. This, I'm going to, what can I do best? I'm going to write stories, write stories, write yeah. stories. And then those stories got more and more popular. You know, which, which, which one kind of like broke through it? Oh, yeah, Nando's one. Yeah. So definitely the Nando's one. And it's kind of interesting because with the Nando's one, it was after I'd written a couple other stories, right? And the Nando's one was a lot of those where I was just writing, just, you know, sometimes you're going off a feeling and right, and you know. And then the one day I get a call, like after, and like I wrote that story today, I think maybe I dropped it in the morning. By the afternoon, I get a call from uh, uh, Daz, I call it Daz now, but I, her name's Darawis. So she's the executive assistant. Mm-hmm. For the chief marketing officer on Nando's back place, right? And she called me like, "Yo, listen, 
uh, that place has asked me to get a hold of you. She found my number. However, uh, can do you mind if he calls you? I'm at all. See him all and then the surf. So get on the way. Sure, you can call me up. So he called me maybe uh, like Wizard now I'm waiting for this call. And yeah, now I like it's like that's it's not as five minutes, but like it felt like it was forever, you know? And I'm waiting for this call, call it again out. But I just ping outside, you know, so I'm obviously talking, hey, no, thanks, thanks, Nando's this, Nando's that. But as comes running, running in the house, hey, and Nando's, you don't know. So the I probably sort of like, I'm giving a web salary, they can't eat any of you know? Yeah. So I'm like, yo, Nando's, see what this, Nando's, that is obviously here, what we're hearing that is that I was going to Nando's, and then got what, and then eat, and cheap. And I'm like, yeah, well, there's nothing money for you, you know? At that place, but you told me to the chief market officer, man. So you can get some Nando's. I'll send you a 2000 rand. Uh, Nando's vouch, you know, so obviously they are like, yo, my boy, the game has changed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm thinking about it like, I just wrote the story in the morning. Later that day, I'm buying Nando's at 2000. Like, we don't know, I'm ordering even from the white side of the... Yeah. <laughs> 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 It's in God that's hit it. I know. I want this white side of the menu, you know. And I go to right the video order now. And like, you know what Nando's you do here? Yeah, I know. Hot pot. Yeah. And... Or a chicken, <laughs> two rolls there, green salad, yeah, three hand, a green salad, yeah. But you know, it's like, yeah, you know, you're like, yo, this is, this is another lot, right? Yeah. And that's why I was like, okay, there's something here. If I keep doing this, maybe I'll get more and more different things, you know what I mean? Yeah. So obviously, then I started writing more and more stories, getting more writing gigs and whatever. Yeah. And during that time, is when I, like, the popularity of the story just went up, and then people would say, if you read the book, Oh, so that's how the idea of the book is. The book, yeah, because now it's yeah, yeah. now it's something really for invoice them because I'm making it happen through the stories and sure. even writing gigs. So now it's linear one of the you get a good So during that time now, the coins are getting bigger than the Zulu earring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at that point, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now yeah, okay, so I was up and building up but now it's no longer just sending hampers saying whatever. Now it's writing, hey, can you help us make our messaging? Hey, we like the way you Catered to a diverse audience, can you help us maybe trying to get to that audience, those kind of things. So now I'm starting to raise some Zara one and I would say what I would say, but I don't know what I was saying for at the time. And then it was like, okay, when this one lady actually commented to say, It's like if you write a book to a young guy, oh, then I was like, ah, oh, I'm just yeah. for me. So I referred to Cat, there's a book, the, the the yellow book that's making waves in your in the screen. <laughs> it's uh, uh your massive book, yeah. yeah. So it, 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 it out you can buy it. Um well that's I saw that because it's here today. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So please so it, if you can go check it out. Very, very, very funny if you love that you love laughing like I do. Yeah. I, I should actually get a copy. Should have asked you to come. Hey, back. yeah, sure, right? Nah. And it's just remember it's the shop price store is worth price. So I understand. So if you see the price of yeah. Yeah. we don't do lay by, we just <laughs> just cash it. You say why what a lie what now we'll talk about that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the concept of the book. Now this lady says make the uh write a book mm. and I will buy it and then how do you receive that? And how do you? So obviously it excited me, right? I remember even mentioning to us like, oh man, I didn't even think about that. Because what I do, especially on social media, I reply to every single call. Yeah, I saw that. So I was like, yeah, yeah, showcase. Let, look, let me see what I can do. And I, then I started deliberately writing a book. Because at first I was just writing the short stories. But then the first idea was like, let me take these short stories and just make a book. Because then it's the easiest way, right? Sure. Then I bought some other guy's book on LinkedIn. He had a book of short stories. And when I bought the book, I read it, but it was like, it was hard to consume. You see the short story, it's fine on social media because then we're seeing one story today, we'll find maybe another two years, yeah, you see a short story. But when you read your book, when you page one, it's not the same story as page two. So it becomes not so nice to enjoy, you know? So I was like, you know what, let me write a, I challenged myself to write an, quote, an ongoing story, but slip in those short stories in between. Because those short stories are still a part of my real life. You know what I'm saying? So how do I fit in those stories? So if I finish off with the line here, how does it go into the short story? And then when you finish reading the short story, how does it continue with the main story? So it's actually quite a very uh, interesting book, you know? So that's how I kind of put it together. Then I was like, okay, should I look at doing publishers or whatnot? Then I was like, no, you know what? I want to do it my own way. You know, I want to package it, package it in a nice box. It's like a premium package. Just so that if I'm standing next to somebody who says, oh, listen, I've been writing books for a hundred years and I've got 25 bestsellers. Yeah. Here's my book. And then I say, oh, this is my first book. 
Then I put it down. We can be here. Actually, you too. So, and the same thing that we're saying for it, like branding. Yeah. Really how people feel about. And it's important, yeah. you know, because a lot of times when people order the book, especially people who see it on social media, they order it and they're obviously imagining one thing. And then when it arrives, they're like, oh, something else. This is yeah. <laughs> or even, it's like, it just feels like it. Because my idea was like, you know, when you watch um, the, these health tours, when you're seeing these fancy houses, oh, what's that for? What's that? And there's always those on the coffee table, there's that Tom Ford black and white little box that's sitting there. You don't know what it is. Yeah, so I keep the, the, so I keep the, you know what that means. Or... Yeah, so the, I was like, I want my book to, to be able to sit in the fanciest estate, yeah. but at the same time, be able to sit. To get it and make it. Yeah, kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it must be able to sit on a room divider and that place. So that's why it's got the Tasi mug, you know, like from Magriza, I was getting tired. But the packaging still makes you feel like you can put it sure. at your what's up on the yeah, and, yeah. And then now that the book is out, okay, before the book is right, hey, the challenges of our publishing. Yeah. Yeah, like what kind of challenges did you go through? Is it like easy to get a publisher? I mean, just do your thing, print. So so now I, I DIY, right? So yeah. obviously I had to, like, because of my background and like the things that I've done, I know how to create a website. I know how to actually do graphic design myself. Some of these things are not things that I don't, I, I enjoy every day, right? Yeah. But I know how to do them. So I was like, listen, I'm going to edit this book. I'm going to um, do the design. I'm going to package it, right? right. And then I'm going to find prints. So I then I find printers. I try to look, obviously try to get the best price, try to get the best price, get the best price that I can. That's why I actually have to sell it at you because it's expensive to just sell that package, you know? Um, and then obviously then after that is like, how do you then market it and sell it every day? You know what I mean? So it's a lot of admin, you know, I wouldn't like, so for me, it's like, if you don't like hard work, I wouldn't recommend self-publishing because when you publish, uh, with a publisher, they do all the work, but they also decide, they decide on the cover. They decide on everything. Yeah. They might even decide on the title of your book. They might say chapter three, oh, change yeah. paragraph four. You yeah, understand? But when you're self publishing, you have all the control, but you also have all the cost. Yeah. Because whoever, like, there's a guy who helped me with the illustration. There's some um, 3D illustration. <laughs> that thing is so cool. You know, I, so let me say, there's all those things. So for me, I was like, the things that I can do for myself, I'll do. Yeah. Things that I need to outsource, I'll pay some things. And also, it must be like, it must be worth a while. Right? And I said, how, how, how much would you charge to do something like this? Okay, let's do it. You must know. I don't want people to say, like, hey, that might be it. Yeah, sure. So you yeah. got to keep things proper because I know for myself, I always rate myself pretty high in terms of like the things that I do. You know, you can see it even in the price of the books. So this is definitely <laughs> premium all the way, you know. Yeah. So even with the people that I work with, I, I want that flavor. Like, let's, let's all feel like we're, we're, we're good. So it was definitely... A lot of work to put together. It took me about, I think since the day I decided I'm going to do the book, it took me about two years till I actually drop it. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, two years between writing the full story, yeah. packaging it, printing, do whatever. Then I did a book launch in the Sands and it kicked Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's say somebody buys your book. Um, what What is the takeaway, you know, it would kind of like improve their lives or maybe perhaps change their perspective. Um, I think I think the main thing is that you realize how regular we all are, right? Because that book is my story. But when you read it, you remember things that you forgot about your childhood because there are a lot of the things that are common, you know, they're very relatable. I remember the little Bagriza. We used to sit around the welcome to us, it smelled like the Dombo Road and then there was... The one uncle unemployed, he used to always complain. Uh, the, the, the table was wrapped in the tapiti, then we were blocking the door. Castina, <laughs> you know, all those kind of things. Those are the things that we all go through, right? So when I tell the story, I obviously tell it from this is my story. But when you read it, you're like, oh, Ace Apple, go on. But the thing is also on the other side is even for people who haven't experienced, for example, any state Kugas, because I was born in the rural state Kugas, then I lived in the birds, right? Uh, so Maybe the people who are only good and linked in the suburb section, when they read the Kasti and the rural part, they actually start to understand people around them. So, okay, that's why I made this other spot. Oh, I mean, <laughs> that's why I made this thing. But look at me, this. But they are waterfall. Why did you get the brick in the garden to put on the door? It's like, 
go far with me if it's, that's the norm. Yeah. You know, but now we're in WhatsApp or why are you putting <laughs> the scene now? I said, no, what am I just going to say about me when I have a scene at the end of the world? I think that's what it is. It just makes you feel great about being normal. Yeah, 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 and so the idea is great, but the place is just not great, maybe. Yeah, right. Like, it's like, wow. this is an amazing idea. Yeah, yeah. Put it in, put it in. So, first of all, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, hence they give move. I just get a lot of people who are like, you know, I'm fine. I, you know, like, there's a lot of people coming on you know, podcasts, share, like, some really dope stories. Mm-hmm. And I think I would like to do what they do. And that's why I think um, whenever I'm chatting with somebody, I'd like to get a sense of what are the kind of skills that you think if somebody would want to jump into what you do, would they would need to have, you know, what kind of soft skills and hard skills like, would they need to have in order to do what you do? Yeah, I mean, first of all, as a writer, so uh, I think it's maybe understanding your audience or like, who are you writing for? Right? Yeah. You're not always writing for yourself. If you're writing for yourself, you might as well <laughs> put it in the cupboard if nobody ever sees it, right? Then you more than three do whatever you want. But if you're writing for people, then you must try and understand people. So when you're around people, you must try and understand the people that you're with. Or, oh, but to our soul, yeah. this is how they act. Because you actually start seeing commonalities around people. Because a lot of times people think when you're a writer, you must come up with these things that are far-fetched or whatever. But yeah. the most powerful thing are usually the simple ones. And when you put it out there, it's like, oh man, why didn't I think about it? Because it's, it's right there it's in front of all of us. Sure. You know, as well as the things that resonate with a lot of people. So that's the first thing. Secondly, it's you you have to write all the time. Like every day you must write. I write every day. No matter what it is, whether I'm writing and I still in uh for LinkedIn or I'm writing stuff for Clyde, I'm, I'm writing stuff for this, or I'm writing for that. Like that's, I'm just writing all the time, you know? So, and you get better because then you get to understand what your perspective is from things because anybody can write, everybody can write. That's what we are taught at school. Like, I mean, we might use a lot of they wanted us to learn how to read and write. So, so, so. we are writing is done by what's your voice? Like, what's that vibe? And like, what's your perspective that's different yeah. to everybody else, you know? So you can find that perspective in writing every day and figuring out what excites people that you know that feels natural to you yeah but other people feel like whoa how did you come like that? <laughs> yeah. so so are there any other skills even like outside what you think writing is that you've kind of like picked up over the years like obviously you think writing is just picking up a piece of paper or maybe your pc typing but like uh there's other things that you probably need to understand or maybe even learn and know like for instance now if you are a writer you need to learn uh but again, platforms like the Google Docs, mm. you need to know the yeah. kind of platform. You need to know how to use a PC. Yeah. You know, so like in the world today, what are the kind of like platforms or maybe even software, like anything really? Yeah. So, is- so that one that I use, uh, I use Grammy a lot, right? Yeah. Uh, so Grammy, the reason why I use it is I usually use it to help shorten. Because all right now, I don't think to no. <laughs> so I always try to find a way of like, okay, I've written this paragraph. How do I make it shorter? Yeah. Like, how can I remove things that I don't, you know, well, how, eh, well, therefore, now it's like you want to worry about them. <laughs> so those things just add things to your, your, it makes you sound smart, but like you really don't need, it. you can just go straight to the point. Like people understand all oh, from here, yeah, because people have been reading different books, right? So first of all, from a tool's wise, I use grammar a lot, uh, but also, Understanding platforms or why are you writing for right? So if I'm writing for social media, there's a certain way that I write. If I'm writing for billboard, I understand or there's a car out there that you do want to watch so many videos. So I always say, oh, thank you. Oh, you know, like that, like that you need writing, yeah. yeah. And that's where really, it's important information to you. But if I'm not going to see it anyway, yeah. then you might as well not have it, right? So you rather just have one big headline and what you want me to do. Do you want me to call, email, dial, what about? Do whatever always just to remember something. Those are some of the things that are important because I think that's where people kind of use it. Right now, I write them for a billboard, but they like, and you see it a lot with black businesses where you see that uh, people do a car sticker. Ah, I can make up. Here's a car sticker. Yeah. Right. That car sticker, if it's a little free, <laughs> uh, Mrs. Mangman's makeup. I think that. And then there's small writing. Yeah. Now it's like, hey, we do lectures, meals, what, and one, 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 but I can't see it. So even if I wanted to book her for my lady, 
I can't do it because now all the information is locked. Whereas if they just wrote, hey, we can make pretty faces. Yeah. Do you want your wife to be pretty? Call her. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, they don't want my wife to be Because now I'm resonating with that, right? So, type of thing. Because anybody can be Mang Mang's makeup, but I want my wife to be pretty. Yeah. So, so they're not calling you, type of thing. So, that's the, those are some of the smaller things that are a little bit more technical to kind of figure out. Sad man, I love to hear that. So the bigger goal for you, like as you are busy writing now, making money mm. and just living your best life, inspiring yeah. people, what's what what's the bigger goal for you? So so look, so my vibe right now is obviously expanding the way I tell stories, right? Because I, I did the stories on LinkedIn that expanded into me self-publishing a book, that expanded into me doing live storytelling, right? Yeah. So now I'm trying to expand into where, where do I take it beyond that? Like, yeah. do, is it, you know, some sort of film vibe? Is it some sort of something different? Theater, is it, you know, a play, the theater? Like, I'm playing around with a lot of different ideas, but the main common thread is storytelling. Because I think for me, my thing is I'm a storyteller. Yeah. Yes, we call it copywriting, we call it whatever, but I'm a storyteller in different forms, whether it's through the book, whether it's through shows, whether it's through emceeing, whether it's through doing talks and I think and that kind of stuff. It's like, how do I elevate it? You know, and how do I keep building the brand? Well, I don't know, you're like a president, Daddy. Yeah, yeah, it's not. And this was just a campaign for, <laughs> for the show. And I realized people are like, that easy. <laughs> you know, people are like, hey, when I look like, can you go to this? And that's the thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you relate to the message, you can also be a show. So those are some of the things. Obviously, like, there is like an overall ambition to do bigger and better things. But uh, over time, you just have to figure it out. Like, like now it's just, I'm figuring it out as I go. So, like I mentioned, I did the LinkedIn stories. I did the book. From the book, I'm doing the in in person shows. Yeah. From there, it's like now, what's the very next step? So, I think you should be excited. We're talking about the shows. The shows, though. Like, yeah, I attended your show. Yes. The live podcast. so cool. But I didn't know what you could stand in front of a crowd and tell a oh, joke, right? Yeah. And the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The singing part. <laughs> 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 a lot of people are like, expect. I know a lot of a couple of people who are like, <laughs> and when I, next time we want to do more of the, well, that's like, it. Yeah, because the thing is, it's like, what I did is also as a, as a teaser, right? Because it's like, some of these things are nice, even you know, when you get them at a small building. Yeah. Everybody is enjoying it, man. And I love how you also did it, like, in the last part with Fuad. Yeah. It's like something that people can take away. Yeah, so, so you see, because I've attended concerts, right? Yeah. Back in the days, me as a kid, because I also love the music a lot, what I always remembered was always that you ask the, like, the action deal, and you, you go home and you're like, oh. If you see here in the car, so I was like, I want that effect because you might not remember him seeing I was saying the whole show. Yeah. But that, yeah, I don't think so. You know, I haven't seen that thing. Oh, it's right. You know what I mean? 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 actually, yeah. Did, did any opportunities come from that, like after that? Yeah, so, like the, so my relationship with Nando is actually growing and growing, right? So, remember I told you the chief marketing officer that called me, right? Yeah. So, after the show, I sent him the clip of where I'm talking about Nando. I'm like, hey. Look what I, I know what I was saying, you know. And then immediately after that, he was like, "Listen, next week Monday, can you come and talk to the marketing team?" You know. Now I'm talking to the first. Well, I should be at marketing team with the country. Bye. Everybody goes up to Nando's marketing, you know. Yeah. So I'm like, "Listen, now I'm gonna go and speak to these people." And he's like, it's been building and building since then. So it's really cool, man. Shit, right? like things are moving very fast for you. I know they have to. They have now. <laughs> and the thing is, it's like that's why I like. Uh, for me, I appreciate these moments here yeah, because you never know. For example, from your audience, who's watching, who's doing whatever. Even if it's that one person that's like, hey, and I actually, this guy, I'm going to get him. We have a thing thing at my way. So sure. him get, you know, that's where the opportunities come. So you have to be open to doing a lot of things that are outside of, you know, comfort and normal. And just this morning, Nicky Wally, Binja, I come see you. We like, boom. But you see, sometimes we can get up, like we can get caught up in this uh, chain of what what's the next step? What am I doing next? And before yeah. you get to re- like it, that will m- can make you feel inadequate sometimes. Yeah. Uh, already that imposter syndrome. Yeah. Like we need to kind of like learn to take time to really chill and reflect, you know, yeah. and acknowledge the nice things that we've been able to achieve. And then you look at the people that who look up to us and get inspired to say, well, yo, I mean, one good and I'd like to be. Like you, is this something that you do for yourself? And if 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 you do, how do you kind of like do it? Like yeah. reflect back and really take time to appreciate and be grateful and identify the things that are going well for you. Yeah, yeah. So that's one thing I suck at, right? Yeah. And I think I'm blessed to have a wide crew 
actually remind me, mm-hmm. right? Because for me, a lot of times it's like, after I did the show, I didn't move on to that. After I did this, I didn't move on to that. You know, so like, I don't take the time to say, it's like, yo, I killed that show. No. Like, you know, and, say, and she'll send me down and be like, oh man, did you see how great you were? Like, you, did you see how the people were? You know, it gives a new perspective, but then you get something to be grateful for, right? to say, and then, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, because the thing is like, because you always try to do the end better. Yeah. You, you tend to forget those where that wins. And, you know, you don't actually reflect in the moment. And sometimes when you're having a tough time, you forget that you're the same guy with those crazy things. So my wife is the one person who will always remind me to say, listen, wow, yeah, that was yeah. great. Wow, this is, what, did you, did you see this? <laughs> you so t- she's always like hyping me up. Yeah. You talk about tough times, Kat. Like you're always happy, excited, smiling, <laughs> being around. Yeah. Have you ever like encountered tough times? Yeah, uh, like people don't want to difficult. Any mental health? What the hell? Do I get those calls? Do I? Those things happen, but I think what I've learned over time, and that's why I was saying even in the beginning to say my parents are my biggest inspiration because even though they had tough times, they never, yeah. they never, they were like, show us yeah. that it was tough, right? So we always felt like we're in a loving home and everything was great. So we just, oh, you when we go out to the outside world, that's when we realized that it didn't, didn't have this, we didn't have that, have that, right? So for me, even now, that's how I get to move around in a way where it's like, I don't dwell too much on a lot of the negative stuff. Yeah, and I obviously guess me. I have sleepless nights and times with this person. I mean, before the show, I'm thinking, go, oh, I am not know what to but why are people even expecting? Yeah, it's it, it, still selling. Don't worry. <laughs> that was, that was it. So you think about those things that you have sleep, sleepless nights. But the thing is, like, always looking at the positive side of things is just always what's going to excite you. No, know? you realize that that inspiration goes just beyond you. It's also the people around you. Yeah. And then also when you inspire the people around you when you're having a bad day. They inspire you, Pat. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a person who blocks the show. You that guy. Then you're like, I act like I do. You know so. That's how you can actually maintain that yeah. quality, yeah. But it doesn't mean that there's no bad things. Everybody has bad things. Yeah, for sure, I suppose. Yeah. I suppose. So now looking at all the work that you've done, obviously amazing. Yeah. What's that one brand that you like coming for you? Like, yeah, you know, like, you, 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 you kind of like love to work. To work with them? Hey, that's a treaty or an <laughs> But I think one that would be uh, quite challenging um, and I think something that is like everybody already like kind of consumes that kind of stuff are like some of your food stuff, right? And like your, your, what are you, Aromethin, what old gold, what So I've worked on some old gold stuff, but like, I think like more in depth, like just like, you know, just being able to do a full 360 kind of campaign. Oh yeah. Because I think for me, what's exciting is being able to take people back to the things that they used to enjoy about those brands. And the address that they used to watch. And that's how I obviously built the LinkedIn stories, right? Yeah. But now it's like, what would be my take? Because I remember even when I went for the Nando's take, uh, talk, uh, one of the people in the audience during the Q&A asked, like, so if you, the exact same vibe, like, if you were dead, I think that's, like, I never know what to say, right? <laughs> if I was to then take one of these brands that I'm always revered, like, even if it's the sunlight, so I'm going to talk about the, how we close the speed. You know? <laughs> like, what am I going to say? You know what I mean? I think that's where the challenge would be. Like, something like that. Like, everybody's mom and dad, that thing was like, everybody like that. And why is it not at your window select your complex? Yeah, it was virtual. You just get a room of I do one of them got the same sunlight, but they just don't put it on the windows. Like, and why is it on the windows? Yeah. But you know why they used to put it on the windows? I don't actually know why. Because it, when it's hot, it lasts. It lasts long. Yeah. Oh. That's <laughs> <So then, laughs> what you putting it to the sunlight. No, I see. So, so you see those kind of things. I think it would be fun to work on because it would be challenging because it would be like, I already think the brand is great. Yeah. So how would I make it great? You know what I mean? So I think yeah. like those kind of brands. What's the like, be what, what cuss the oil? You know? <laughs> what did you need to cuss out? Because I mean, like, I don't know. Come on, you know what They always work. So what did you need to see? Yeah. You must see the stuff out the first time. I'll tell you what he goes. What's very dry you have? Is it cuss the oil in it? Or in Chicago? Yeah. I'll tell you when you're on Canada, you'll be sick. Whenever you see enjoy, you'll be sick until I got older. Because my lady night and he said, I got a cuss so now I don't want to use it in other customers. Every time I see you, you use it in the house, this show, uh, but uh, it's about to go down. So yeah. So for the general, what kind of man? Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm not just going to say. Yeah, I'm not just going to say. So yeah, it's like, um, I think 
One of the last questions that went on for was it's AI. How is it changed? Like everybody is talking about AI. And some are scared what is AI is taking jobs. I mean, some are excited that it's making Spani easier. But what's your take on AI? How do you think? So, so for me, like I mentioned a little bit earlier, I think it's still a bit tricky if you really want things that are super authentic, especially from a writing perspective, yeah, from a story perspective. Because like, I mean, I look at, let's say, from the challenges that I see some of my art director friends have where they try to find local images where it shows Nimamzo or Ibsenmakwinya at a station, yeah. right? But because AI, when they hear Africa, it then gives you a duk that's tied not in it. But there's, there's certain nuances. Yeah. Though we're man, Nimamzo go Josie, where's a duke like Nimamzo in Kenya? But the way they tie it is different. And for me, for a person who's from Mozanti, when I see this, I'm like, this is like Kenya. Yeah, yeah. So, I see I'm out. <laughs> as much as I see the Queen Yara, well, I'm like, Queen Yara, little bit yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I relate, you know, type of thing. So yeah. there's still that vibe, I think. But over time, I think you give these things time, we'll all embrace them. But I think there's still those small and nuances that when you have to, it, it, it needs to feel authentic. It needs to look authentic. It needs to sound authentic. And I, I think, like, as much as we can use them, we still need that human intervention. That's why I'm not scared for it. Taking jobs in that sense. Yeah, yeah. I think there's still, there'll always still be that gap. Um, there's something that you've been to as a human that AI cannot do that, yeah. you know, that you can bring as a unique perspective. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. I love to hear that, though. So yeah. before we close, Banali Kal Chagayi, Hore, the guest, I will host the Hanyan Nyana, I would say, the actual host. One question, right? All right, cool. So <laughs> that's a tricky one. Okay, so, so obviously we out here. In Midrand, they, you know, it's the vibe and whatever. So what inspired you to actually create a podcast? Because I mean, everybody's got a podcast. And also, a second question is, what what is it about your podcast that you think is yeah. perfect? Yeah. And man, I think a lot of people had, have asked me that question, but differently. Yeah. It, it, it feels really different. I, I think it's worthy of a different answer. Yeah. So... When we started, we didn't want to make a podcast, but we just wanted to make information about the things that we do, oh, the way about yes. music, right? So we were trying to go to When we got into Omozi, this creative thing was new. Mm. Copywriting, whatever, back in Mama 2019, it was already happening. Yeah. We were already talking about it. Yeah. When you go on the internet to find information, mm. it was there. But you find people like your Gary V's, your clients. Yeah. Those are the people who are talking about these things, but there's no people like what tab or what tab or talking about this, these things, you know, and that didn't mean Hore. We didn't have people in the space who are really doing dope stuff with yeah. dope friends. Yeah. So we were like, perhaps there's an opportunity to create these stories yeah. in our tone, you know. Tone. Ah, Bring you know, like, yeah. you know, like yeah. how she needed that, episode, that, that uh, podcast, you will see yourself writing that dope copy for that. You know what I mean? Because you can see the people who look like me doing these things, sharing how they do them, you know? So it was kind of like inspiration coupled with like, you can do this because they are doing it, you know? And also like a platform for people who are doing great stuff to come and say, yo, I'm available for jobs. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. So, so, so yeah, that was the whole idea about Ooh. this podcast. And I think the way that we are, doing it differently really is we we want people we, we bring people or we call rather after people who are self-taught in yeah. races yeah. and people who have the background if you really interrogate it you don't see them winning to that or getting to that level mm -hmm. rather you know so maybe surrounded by you know but it only made sense to be a policeman a doctor a nurse you know, and then now that you can see through them that even with that kind of like fucked up background, you can still you can still do these cool things. Yeah, and like oh, actually, there's other things other than um, you yeah. know the conventional yeah. careers. So yeah, that ah now bro, yeah, I suppose you got some Okay, so that's how we come to the end of this episode with the dope, 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 dope katapatulare. What you gonna do, my my G? Check that camera, yeah, and that please. Paula Loroman and then 
All right, yeah. So my name is Katrin Kutulari. I'm a ordinary guy who loves to tell extraordinary stories. Also the president of the Light Skin Brother Association fighting for light skin rights because everybody wants a tall, dark, and handsome guy. And now I'm not tall, I'm not dark, but at least I'm handsome. Please subscribe to the podcast and also order your uh, copy of Welcome to South Africa, your master book at welcome to South Africa. Yes, sir. Wait, wait, wait. Why is it like this? Not a one shirt, I'm Fine, fine. I will wait. I will wait.